Well, hello everybody. I'm Tom Morley. I'm a uh, fiddle player, uh, educator, author of uh, several books, including Learn to Play Irish Trad Fiddle and the Fiddle Club Favorite Series for Strings. I'm a Daddario artist, uh, a happy endorser for all the products made by the Daddario company, including all the great strings, all the great brands of strings they make for uh, string players. Uh, some of my favorites are the Helicor strings and also the um, Kaplan E string. Uh, and I also love their rosin and I use all their products and I'm happy to be an endorser for the Daddario company. Um, I love teaching and sharing my passion for Irish fiddling and I love finding easy tunes that are fun for beginners and, e and intermediate players to learn. Uh, the one that I just played for you is what we're going to learn today, a great Irish jig uh, called the Kilfenora. Uh, the Kilfenora is a town in Ireland in County Clare, uh, just on the edge of, of an amazing area called the Burren, which looks like a, almost like a moon's landscape, a, a, a giant prehistoric upheaval of limestone. It's like you're walking on a uh, a glacier made out of stone. It's an amazing area and I've, I've walked it many a time myself. Um, but Kilfenora is a just a tiny little town uh, but it's famous particularly for uh, one thing and it was one of the uh, areas where Cayley bands first started in the 1950s. These were dance bands made up of a mixture of players, sometimes not even traditional mu uh, musicians or or instruments, and uh, they would use uh, piano accordions, uh, even saxophones, uh, believe it or not, and make a kind of a big band sound out of the dance tunes of Ireland for folks to dance to in, in the large dance halls. Uh, and the Kilfenora Cayley Band was probably one of the first and most famous of all these bands. So whenever I play the Kilfenora Jig, I think of the uh, famous Kilfenora Cayley Band. Uh, jigs, of course, are great fun. They're the most Irish sounded of all tunes in the 6 8 time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That great count there. This tune is in the key of D, uh, certainly one of the easiest and happiest keys. And uh, we should play a D scale. Let's do that together. And uh, once you've done that, you've basically played every note you're going to need for the tune. Uh, except for you're going to need a couple open E's as well. But here's a D scale. I think we all know how to do that. Open one, two, high second, and three on your D and A strings. And I also want you to think about the sound of this, the scale that we just played because the Kilfenora jig uses big bunches of scales that we just played going up and going down. Uh, which makes it a pretty uh, fun tune to learn by ear. Uh, you'll hear all those things happen. It's the kind of thing we always hope is going to happen in a tune, but seldom actually does. But here in the Kilfenora jig, you're going to be able to uh, go up and down a scale a couple times. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen, in the B section particularly, is we're going to dance around on an arpeggio. Uh, this is a broken chord. This is notes that are made that would make up a, a chord if we could play a whole chord the way a guitarist or mandolin player would strum it, or a piano player would hit it all at once on the piano. We can't do that on the violin, of course, so we have to play those notes separately. So if you think of a D chord, that's D, F sharp, A, and then another D, A, F sharp, D, open two, open three. Many scale books, including the, the one that I like to use called Essentials for Strings, you learn the scale and then you play the arpeggio right after that. So that really sets up a nice uh, sound. Now if you practice that, what I just did there, uh, you will be playing many of the elements that make up the melody of the Kilfenora jig. So uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, so let's dive right into it. What, what do you say? and uh, learn the first little segment. We're going to learn it in two measure uh, uh, segments, just the way I like to do it, and you're going to find out that we're going to borrow many segments and use them over again in the A and B sections. So don't panic, don't get frustrated, because once you learn a variety of these, uh, these bits, you'll be visiting them again and using them again. So the first note in the Kilfenora jig is an F sharp. how we want to get it 
started. So that's F, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, F, E, D. A fun little melody to learn. Let's do that a couple times. Okay, the second uh, measures. I'll start with three fingers down. So that's three, one, one. I like to think of those first four measures of this tune as being kind of a question and then an answer. So the question is the F sharp uh, grouping. And the answer starts with three fingers. So there's your question and your answer musically. So let's do those four measures together a few times. One, two, three, ready, go. One more time, ready, go. So there's measures one, two, three, and four. The next two measures, guess what? You play the first two measures again. up with three fingers on the A string and go almost straight down a D scale. I told you that would happen. So that was that's fun. We do make what I call a little mid-course correction there. We don't go straight down. We start that. That's right down to D scale. Then we go back to third finger. So a D scale with a mid-course correction, you might call that. So let's put the first eight measures together. Let's play the whole A section. And guess what? The B section is going to end with that same scale. So you've already got part of that figured out. So here we go with the A section of the Kilfenora jig. One, two, three, ready, go. tune there, all based to right within that D scale. Let's learn the second section. Here we're going to start with three fingers on the A string and we're going to do a backwards arpeggio. Listen to this. That's the arpeggio I taught you. Just backwards, right? And we're going to use that several times, so get Get ready and practice that a few times. Now you play that and then you hook it to a few extra notes, so listen to all that. So we have to finally go over there and grab an open E real quick. It's the only extra note we have that isn't in the D scale. One more time on that. So we're always coming back to the D. Then guess what we get to do? We get to go straight down a D scale and straight back up. We just never get to the open D. You can't you make it any easier than that. I can't make it any easier than that, folks. So there we go. Let's play that D scale going down. And when you get to first, you go right back up again. So there we go. Let's listen to the first four measures of the B section. we go. And again, guess what you do? You play that arpeggio backwards again. Then you end the B section like you ended the first one with the D scale going down with the mid course correction. How easy could that be? So here's the whole B section. I'm going to play the entire B section for you. the B 
section. I'm going to put it all together for you. I find this to be one of the most fun uh, jigs that any beginner or intermediate player can hear and not need the music to it all to, uh, to quickly learn. Uh, we uh, uh, have a lot of fun with the building blocks of tunes. I'd always like to say that the scales are the building blocks in one way or the other and the kilfenor is probably the perfect version of that. So here we go. I'm going to play the whole tune for you. And I hope you have fun learning this one at home. One, two, three, ready, go. <laughs> Irish Fiddle in 101, there's your new tune, uh, one I think you'll learn and uh, play many times uh, in the days and months to come, every time you want to play an Irish trad tune. Uh, I'd like to tell everybody to look for me at Fiddle Hell in Westford, Massachusetts. I'll be there for the, my sixth uh, year, a four-day amazing uh, fiddle workshop event with hundreds of, of workshops that uh, you can take in every field of every, every kind of folk fiddling that there is uh, with amazing teachers including Jay Unger, the man who wrote Ashokan Farewell, um, Bruce Molsky, probably the most famous old-time fiddler, and uh, Daryl Anger, great bluegrass and newgrass player, and yours truly. I don't know how I got involved in, in being able to be around such amazing fiddle players, but I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, so maybe I'll see you in at Fiddle Hell, Massachusetts in November. That's the first weekend in November. And uh, happy fiddling, and see you next time.